Yo, what's good YouTube? Uh, it's your boy JY and uh, I've got a deck profile for you guys today. So, um, you, you guys know I went to Cardiff Regional on Saturday, you know, I scrubbed out. But it was a big tournament, 150 people, 8 rounds, and I actually got the profile uh, of the winner. So, uh, Ben Challoner won the Regional uh, playing Phantom Knights. Uh, so, of course, I had to, you know, feature it on the channel. Uh, so, yeah, Ben, take it away, my guy. Hi everyone, this is uh, Ben Challoner here. Um, so, I won... Uh, Cardiff Regional, uh, going undefeated in Swiss, uh, going seven and one uh, in well seven wins and a draw in Swiss, uh, only draw being to uh, Luke Delaney. Uh, this is being recorded uh, for JY Sharif's channel, um, just so that he's got content uh, as he's up and coming in YouTube. Uh, hope you enjoy the profile. So yeah, um, as the profile goes, um, we played Phantom Knight Brave. Uh, so to start off with, we played three Torn Scales, Heart and Soul of the Deck, uh, two Cloak, three Boots, one Gloves, uh, one Greaves. Uh, a lot of the OCG are playing um, either one Cloak and no Greaves, but I feel in the TCG that we have to play uh, Greaves. It's an extra extender, extra name, and it allows us um, to just make boards a lot easier and just push through a lot more. Also against the back row decks as well, it's just an extra name to just, you know, summon, make a break sword and then Zeus them. Uh, for the Brave engine, we played one Griffin and triple water. Uh, very good. Um, just being able to get access to the spells just from the water is insane and it being an extender as well as insane. Uh, Griffin as well, just like an Omni Negate as well, is just so good, so good for the deck. And the fact that you can OTK with the token as well is just ridiculous. Uh, Scythe, the card that should have probably been banned. Um, I mean, yeah, this card just says it all, like, you know, stops the extra deck, stops everything. Like, you just win through that. Uh, then we play Celestial Dasher as part of the Destiny Hero engine. Uh, again, uh, these cards are just phenomenal. Uh, this allowing you to special summon one from hand if you draw a monster in the draw phase is just ridiculous. And Celestial being a pot of greed. Um, my mate Connor Dwyer played um, Celestial in um, this deck before we got uh, Destroy Phoenix. He played it with Dystopia and from just watching him draw two and like getting so much advantage, uh, that's what got me onto the deck as well as you know watching July TCG as well. Um, so that's the bricks, and then for the ham traps we played three ash, three ogre, two nib. Uh, so ash is just too good not to not play. So we had to just play it. Uh, ogre f phenomenal all weekend. Um, the fact that they're level three as well comes up too, being able to normal summon make cherubini, etc. And you know ghost ogre was phenomenal. Um, just stopping a fateful adventurer. And also um, stopping the Griffin Rider. Also, a Prank Kids uh, pranks as well was pretty good. Um, also against like the Sword Soul decks, uh, if they may if they went with the Moye lines, uh, you can just go over the Moye and stop them there. Also against the Hulk deck, uh, if you go over the Hulk, it's kind of important because um, it means they can't make the Aurora Don. So yeah, Ogre was just phenomenal. Uh, Nibiru was kind of meh to begin with, um, because mainly the idea was like, well, we're going to play against a lot of PK Brave, and they're going to double Scythe Lock, and they're not going to put the Omni Gate out, but um, I was slightly wrong in saying so, so uh, people were putting Omni Gates out by like probably the fifth summon, so maybe Nib wasn't correct, but at the same time, like people, some people weren't ready for it, so it, it was... It was an iffy card, like, it could have been good, could have been bad, but, like, we made it so that it was only two, mainly because of the side deck plan. Uh, that's it for the monsters. Uh, for the spells, we played Foolish Burial, Reinforcement of the Army, Call by the Grave. No explanation for these. Both very powerful, all three very powerful one-offs. Uh, two Fusion Destiny, probably the card that should have got banned, but um, we'll keep it around for as long as it needs to be. Um... Again, God card, just wins games. Uh, DP on its own can just win games. Phenomenal. Uh, Forbidden Droplets, very good. Too too good in this game. 
Um, not much else I can say, other than it's just really good. Uh, then the broken engine, um, so these cars just facilitate so much. Uh, Sebastian Todd uh, said on Twitter that uh, Riots was basically engaged but without setting up three spells in the grave. 100% agree with him, could not agree any further. This card is just phenomenal. Like being able to get access to your Faithful Adventurer and then like being able to play the grind game as well, just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal cards. Like I just, yeah, if you're not playing them, then like you need to reevaluate your life. Um, one Shade, One Wings, and then Triple Fog. Um, there's not a lot to say about the traps. Uh, except from you can play two of this, but I found that the third fog was coming up so much, so you know we had to play through fog. Um, the amount of times that the third one came up was just phenomenal. So that's about it uh, for the extra deck. We played one Levy of the Sea Dragon. Very good. If you resolve this, uh, you were winning the game, like regardless. Um, as long as this went off, like you just won. You got so much follow up for the next turn. Uh, Double break sword, break sword is just phenomenal. Um, being able to pop and then like summon back two to make the verte is great. Um, so I didn't, so I opted not to play the rank four, um, mainly because um, it was kind of very situational and optional, and more likely I was linking off the materials to make something either way. Uh, then we played down at Zeus, no explanation for these, uh, both phenomenal cards. Like being able to make a four material Zeus on top of a break sword is just bonkers and you just win so many games just from this card. Uh, then we played Almirage and Link Spider to make sure that we were super consistent because um you know because we're not playing many level three extenders now. Um you only want to play a few just so that um well you only want to play the PKs and the Brave Engine because you want to make it super consistent because the way the deck wins is that because it's so versatile, it can just like beat for anything. And that's what I discovered over the weekend. Like you didn't need to put out these fancy, like win, a, win more boards like you used to in the past. You could just like win games just through being the more consistent deck and being the better deck in comparison. So you had to play Almirage so that you can make Almirage up here and then Link Spider down here. And then these would be a Verte Anaconda. Uh, Cherubini, broken card, probably should be banned, but uh, again, not much to say about this. Uh, same with Thirte. Thirte is just phenomenal, really good. Uh, Dagda, again, very good card. Uh, gets you to the scythe, just phenomenal. Uh, then we played one Dark Charmer. This card, all day, every weekend, summoning it, just like breaking boards, um, being able to make a Bardish off of this as well. And, you know, uh, if it died, like being able to get a PK to hand which is phenomenal, um, very good card, overall, like, overperformed. Uh, then the boy, Bardish, uh, again, very good card. Um, probably shouldn't have come off the ban list when it did, but at the same time, it wasn't really doing a lot. But now, like, this card is just phenomenal. Um, we'll probably get, like, the OCG, um, where, you know, they don't hit this card. They'll hit Torn Scales, because Torn Scales just brings so much advantage for the deck. Uh, Nightmare Unicorn, uh, Phenomenal card. Same with access code. Like because you play like more attributes and stuff, you're able to pop like four cards now with this card. So uh, and like you can get easier game access with this. So yeah, uh, access code was just phenomenal. And then the boy himself, DPE. Like this card needs no explanation. He pop, he revive, and like he make your monster parents monsters lose extra uh, attack. This card overall overperformed. Like if you drop if you got this on the board, you pretty much won the game. Uh, so many games were just won by just getting this card onto the board. Uh, that's the extra. Uh, for the side, we played three Lancia. Very good card. Too good, this format. Uh, almost wanted to main deck it, but um, I didn't want to lose to Eldritch, so we just sided it. Uh, then two Droll, two Imperm. Uh, these were the side deck choices, just in case. Um, you can like you know take Nib out for one or the other. And then if these didn't work against that deck, you could just put in Harpy's Feather Duster and Rare Reboot. Uh, these cards are phenomenal. Like, they just win games, like, on their own. Like, I played against a Eldritch Dragoon player, and literally, like, he set four, and I had Rare Reboot. I know some of the PK, he went 
uh, Conk, I went Red Reboot and then like Zeused him and like he just lost the game from there. And I was in Lancia as well, so he couldn't banish any of his uh, trap cards. And then free to win, like this card's phenomenal. Um, so the reason we played this over like cards like Lightning Storm and Cosmic was because of the discard outlet and that being phenomenal and like you can just side this against pranks and then like hit the pandemonium and they're kind of scared so that's really good and then final card free and spell uh, so the theory behind and spell was that um you could activate this in the draw phase make your opponent like activate every single spell quick play spell in their draw phase and then um they wouldn't be you know able to like you know, hit the scythe etc if needs be or they wouldn't be able to uh, hit the dpe with uh, droplets or anything like that because you'll have popped the drop the dpe during your your turn during the end phase so then it comes back during the standby phase and then the draw phase flip this and like you win the game from there uh, so yeah that was the side um so the matchups throughout the day uh so round one we played against trap eldritch uh two one um probably shouldn't have won that matchup but he let me get to break sword um and yeah from there i made zeus and blew him out of the water um i think he had everything but like i think he was just like very nervous so can't blame him for that uh round two was against uh adam Anzipater. um be that 2-0 um he couldn't he couldn't stop the scythe game one and game two, Ash Blossom on one Adam Emancipator was enough. Uh, round three was against uh, Luke Delaney, who was playing uh, Sword Soul, Tenyi, Black Rose, uh, Spam Deck. Uh, it was very back and forth um, to begin with. Game one, he OTK'd me, unfortunately. Um, you know, DP wasn't enough. Uh, then game two... I just outgrinded him. I made a few mistakes, but uh, because my deck could outgrind him and like just hand trap him better, um, he lost through that. Um, and then game three, uh, because there wasn't much time on the clock, um, I put him under droll. He ended on like Shen Shen and stuff, and I then Zeused him twice. Um, then made my own DP. Well, then I made a Dagda. Uh, and then activate Fusion Destiny, some DPE, and then um, got the Lancia, but like because time was called, uh, it ended up being a draw. But I'm pretty sure if we had a minute left, I would have won the match anyway. But unfortunate. Uh, then round four, I played against uh, the Mirror Match against uh, Bradley Hayward. Uh, really good match, actually. Like, well, game one, won the dice roll, made full board. Um, he scoops, uh, game two, um, he tries to make full, he makes full board, um, because he's, you know, I Lancia him, but, um, he was called by the grave. I make a small mistake, not realising that, uh, you can double Lancia if you draw both. Um, so, yeah, that was my mistake there, so, yeah, should have doubled Lancia him and then I would have won the map, uh, the game. But then, game three, I put out just everything and, like, he just loses the match. Uh, so round five, play against uh, Sword Soul that's playing Hulk. Uh, it's not Hulk Turbo, but like game one, I beat him. Game two, he beats me. Game three, I beat him. Simple as that. Um, round six was against the uh, Eldritch Dragoon deck, Simon Batty. Um, it was alright. Game one, he beat me because of Red Eyes Fusion. Uh, game two, I beat him because of Access Code. And then game three, I beat him because of Red Reboot and his own Lancia. Um, round seven, play against Alex Robertson from the Disciples. Uh, he's playing the Halp deck as well, but it's more Sword Soul related. Uh, game one, he bricks opening um, like triple Long Young, so he um, passes on the uh, Baron, and that's about it. Um, Round and then game two, he you know pushes through and like is able to put a board up. Uh, round and then uh, sorry, game three, uh, he I open full combo. He opens droplets, but like he doesn't open enough tenues to be able to push through my board, and I just clear his board. 
uh, on the clapback um, round. And then final round was against uh, Henry Bancroft from the Disciples. Uh, game one, I established DPE, Faithful Adventurer, Griffin Rider, um, and a Fog Blade. And he uh, gets Scythe locked, and then I just kill him on the clap. Back to my turn. Uh, game two, I nearly beat him, but uh, unfortunately, uh, he opened a few more hand traps uh, than I expected. But like, I was able to like nearly break his entire board. But he played a second Bow Wow Bark, so that's how he beat me. Game uh, two, and then game three, uh, DPE plus uh, Brave Token is kind of nuts. He unfortunately didn't open a kid in game three, um, but you know we managed to uh, beat through and that's how we won the event um there's not a lot to say like about the deck like it just does what it does it scythe locks and it does other things um but that's about it um for, so for the shout outs i want to shout out um my boy luke bennett over in taiwan uh, he's doing great stuff over there he helped me with this deck a lot um we had long conversations in discord about it all um before the event and you know it was really good but god give the boys credit where credit's due he's doing amazing over there uh shout out to uh my local store as well income gaming a uh, great community great group of people like the amount of you know amount of testing we get done you know all the product they sell everything like that you know like can't fault them like you know but like great store great lot of people uh, got a shout out as well, uh, Lewis Plimmer, who runs the locals. Uh, great lad, you know, many hours spent testing with him as well in the store, up until late at night, eating so much Taco Bell as well. Like, just great lad. Uh, also got a shout out, um, Connor Dwyer and Victoria Bettany. Um, those two have managed to, like, um, take me from a dark place and, you know, you know turn my life around in a way um, to you know, feeling more happy, etc. And like, you know, wanting to progress and making me realise that I'm, you know, pretty good at this game and that, you know, we can get there. Um, you know, I also want to give a shout out to JY for having me on his channel. Um, it's great, you know, to be on so someone that went to world his channel, um, like JY, you know, um, he he's got a lot of content to come and... I'm sure, you know, his YouTube creations will be better as they get forward. Okay, thank you guys. Um, hope you find success with this deck as well, as much as I did. And um, have a good one. Peace.